a 28.2 gram sample of nickel at 99.8 degrees Celsius is placed in, is dropped in, if you will, is dropped in 150.0 grams of water. at 23.5 degrees Celsius. So the nickel is at 99.8 degrees Celsius. We drop it in water that's at 23.5 degrees Celsius. That's what this says. Okay. After thermal equilibrium is reached, in other words, after we allow everything to settle down, where now no more heat is being transferred between the metal and the water. After thermal EQ, uh, let me write it out actually. After thermal equilibrium is reached, Okay, the temp of the solution, the temp of the solution is 25 degrees Celsius. What is C? What is the heat capacity for nickel? So here, we're taking hot nickel, dropping it in water. The heat is released into the water, so the water rises in temperature. Um, and now we're going to, from that, we want to be able to measure the heat capacity of the nickel. Okay, let's draw a little schematic of what it is actually going on. Okay, I have got the nickel here at a temperature of 99.8. This is actually a good way to do this because you can actually see it pictorially what's going on. We have the water, which is at 23.5 degrees Celsius. This is a degree Celsius. Now, so this one drops in temperature. This one rises in temperature, and at some point when thermal equilibrium is reached, they're both going to be at 25 degrees Celsius. That is where we ended up. That is the thermal, the, the thermal equilibrium. Okay, now, energy that's lost by the nickel is energy that's absorbed by the water. Okay, so in other words, the heat that the nickel gives off is equal to the heat that the water absorbs. They're equal to each other. Okay. Um, I'm going to run this uh, calculation one way, and then I'm going to do something slightly different. At the end, I'm going to talk about this little negative sign that's going to show up out of nowhere. So Q of nickel is MC delta T. And Q of H2O is um, M C delta T. So now let me see. Let's go ahead and put our values in. We have uh, 28.2 grams of nickel. We're looking for C. That's what we want. And delta T is uh, 25 minus 99.8. Um, I don't know if I should do it this way or not. Um, okay, that's fine. Okay, 25 minus 99.8. That's equal to the mass of water, which was 150. And the specific heat of water is 4.18. And the change in temperature is 25 minus 23.5. 25 minus 23.5. That's the delta T for the water. It goes from uh, 23.5 to 25, and this one goes from the, um, the final minus initial, 25, from the 99.8. That's why we've set it up this way. Okay, so let's go 28.2 C times 25 minus 99.8 equals 940.5 joules. When we run through this math, we multiply this by this, divide through, we should end up with 0.446. Okay, 
This is the heat capacity for the nickel. This is in joules per gram per degree Celsius. Okay, we said that the, so let's stop and take a look at this. Uh, a heat capacity is, is not a negative number. This is just a mathematical artifact here uh, based on how we did the problem. When you're doing this particular kind of problem, what you end up having to do is, because the heat absorbed is equal to the heat released, well, as it turns out, one is, because one is releasing heat, it's losing, and the other one is gaining that heat, so it's positive. So as it turns out, the, the sum of those is actually equal to zero. That's the whole idea. Um, from one perspective, the loss is equal to the gain. Therefore, to actually make them equal, you really have to stick a negative sign in front of it. Or you can just run this particular calculation as is, just leaving everything MC delta T, MC delta T. Because one is dropping in temperature, one is rising in temperature, the delta, because it's defined as final minus initial, one of these is going to be a negative number. So that's where this little negative sign shows up. This is an artifact of the mathematics based on how you did it. If you want to run this same problem and not have to worry about the sign at the end, you can just say the Q of one equals negative the Q of the other because that's what it is. One of them is a positive quantity. It is being, um, it is being absorbed. The other one is a negative quantity. It is being released. It just depends on your perspective. As far as the mathematics is concerned, one is the negative of the other. So you can go ahead and put the negative sign in here and then run this calculation. Or you can just run this calculation doing final minus initial for nickel, final minus initial for water, leaving everything as it is based on the definition of delta. And then if you end up with a negative sign, just go ahead and drop that negative sign. The negative sign is a physical feature of the problem. It doesn't necessarily reflect the actual mathematics of the problem. Heat capacity is a positive capacity. So we'll just take the 0.446. So as long as you keep that in mind with problems of this nature, where something is dropping in temperature, something is rising in temperature, the final is going to be, one of them is going to be negative, the delta t's. So we have to account for that negative. You can account for it here in the beginning, or you can account for it at the end. I hope that that makes sense. We may actually be returning to a particular problem like this, maybe to talk about it a little bit more, because sometimes there is a little bit of confusion regarding this. Okay, thank you for joining us for AP Chemistry, and thank you for coming to see us here at educator.com. Take good care. Bye-bye.